Hey folks, welcome to another Triple T Thursday. For those just joining us, that's tools, tips, and talk where we'll discuss info for the knife maker. Today's episode, I'm really excited to try out this new tool. As you saw from the thumbnail, I just got a fiber laser. And if you're not sure the difference between a fiber laser and a diode laser, we're going to get into that. Uh, the folks at Laser Pecker were nice enough to send me this laser to try out. Uh, I'm really excited because this one will mark steel. Let's go take a look. So before I open this guy, um, let's talk about the difference between a fiber laser and a diode laser. Uh, the diode lasers typically have been much more economical. Um, you can get into a fiber laser for $500 or so. Um, the difference is in the way it moves and how powerful the laser is and the kind of laser. I'm not a pro, but uh, uh, I know there is a difference. The diode lasers tend to be better um, and usable on things like wood and leather and, and things like that. And if you're going to try to mark steel, really what you're doing is kind of coating the blade with some kind of paint or something like that and you're you're hitting it with a laser and you're kind of burning that off and turning it black you're not really i mean you can but you're not really getting much depth to the uh um, to the laser marking that you're putting on any kind of steel it's it's just not the right kind of laser for it the other thing is the diode lasers tend to be a little bigger because the head moves around and I have a you've maybe you've seen me do videos um, on the diode laser that I have the head of the laser moves around so you can only get so much precision because it's only as accurate as the motors that are moving it around uh, so opposed to the fiber laser the laser is fixed and there's mirrors that will move the laser and point the laser in different um, areas and it's a fiber laser, so it's meant for marking steel. It will get really good depth into steel. On the other hand, it won't do wood, and it really you'll get it, you'll get some depth in the leather, but it won't cut things like wood. It's just not meant for that. So we're gonna try it, and we'll show you what it does. But uh, we're gonna. Um, I've got some copper, some brass, some mild steel, both with mill scale on it and shiny. Sorry, shiny and mill scale. And uh, at the end, we're going to do uh, a stainless steel knife, one of my sand tigers, and uh, see what kind of etching we can get on it. So let's open this up, set it up, and get going. So it came with the, um, this rotary um, item attachment, whatever you want to call it. This is so you can put round items on it, and they kind of spin, so if you're doing you know, like a bottle or something like that. That's what that's for. I don't know that I'm going to get into that, but it's nice to have. We got a manual and the laser, if I can get it out of here. There. I'm assuming this is the base. They give you some of these business cards. I have a whole stack of these uh, that I purchased before. Um, so we'll play with these as well. We got some very fashionable glasses. <laughs> Safety first, folks. Setup of this thing is trivial. You install two screws. You just take the laser and screw it in here and I'm done. Plug it in. You got to plug the top into the base and uh, that's it. So let's read the manual a little more. So now it's time to set the height of the laser, uh, and that's based on what you're putting on it. So I'm going to just put this piece of steel on here. I'm going to hit this, and it shows you, whoops, shows you two dots. So you just raise it or lower it until the two dots are one. All right, so we got it dialed in. You can also tilt this if you're doing an engraving on an angle you can tilt the whole head which is kind of cool and uh, if you were curious you can also pop um, the bottom out of this and hold it against something like a handheld uh, item you could even screw it down or something like that but that's really cool it's very portable so next thing i got to do is open the laser pecker app so let's go install that on my iphone 
All right, so I'm all set up, I'm ready to go. Uh, one thing is make sure you take this cap off of it because even though you see the laser, the laser is not coming through uh, this. So I actually had the cap on it and I, you know, I, it wasn't working and I couldn't figure it out. So make sure you take the cap off. Um, so you need to set the height. So when you first start, the little dots will be will be separate from each other and you just need to make sure that those connect and that kind of sets the height for whatever you're engraving. Okay, so I've got the mobile app installed here on my phone. Uh, I just put TK Corp in just simple text. Uh, we're gonna try that and uh, see how it goes. Uh, I'm gonna put the uh, laser like this so that uh, you guys can see it here. All right, so uh, I've got it set. It's about one inch wide now. Let's um, hit preview. It warns me that I need to um, put my glasses on, which I will. And now it shows you where it's gonna go, which is pretty cool. Um, no issues with placement or anything like that. I've got this set up um, where I want it, so I'm gonna hit next here. And now it asks me whether it's 1K, 2K, or 4K. Let's just try it in the middle one, 2K. It's sending the file to the device, uh, which is done. Now it asks me what material. I'm gonna pick metal oxide, and I'm just gonna pick the defaults, which is 60% um, um, strength, power, 10% uh, depth, and one pass. It should be really quick, but let's see what it does. Okay, that took about 10, 12 seconds. Uh, oh, 17 seconds, it said. Uh, let's take a look. So you can kind of see it there. I'm just gonna wipe my finger across it. Okay, so we got a little bit of depth, but not really very much. Uh, I can see it though. So let's try and play with some settings. I'm gonna do a couple more here and uh, then we'll go back and I'll show you the different, uh, talk about the different settings. Okay, so let's compare. This one was the default settings, which is 60% power, 10% depth. This one is 100, 100 on the depth and the power. With one pass, I can definitely feel it. It has depth. And this one is 100, 100 with four passes. This one, I can definitely feel the depth. Um, pretty much as, as deep as uh, an electro etch. Maybe not quite, but I can definitely feel it. All right, let's get my logo in there and try that. One thing I was happily impressed about is the software and the instructions for this machine. Uh, the software you install on your phone is spectacular. It's really, really easy to use, and I got through this without a problem. Being able to use this with a laptop connected is really cool. The engraving you're watching here took about two and a half minutes, uh, but came out really, really crisp and clear. So let's take a look at the things that I've etched. So first off, we did this mild steel, um, and this is with mill scale on it. So I did these three, which I talked about already. Uh, my logo here, which was, um, I think this one is just one pass um, there, but definitely you can feel the depth. And it's a pretty big version of my uh, of my logo. And most what I was most interested in is what it would do on um, like silvery steel. And you can see right there, I did a um, just a smaller version of my logo. I'll try to zoom in a bit. Um, that is really really good. The detail is incredible. Much much better than what you would get from electro etching. Uh, and it's nice and deep. Um, I think I did this one four times. Um, so really, really happy with that. So let's look at some of the other things that I did. Um, I did a piece of copper. So there's that same logo. This is one pass. Uh, and I think this is 50% um, power. Sorry, 50% depth, 100% power. Um, so pretty good. 
Then we moved on to brass. And this is the first one I did. This one, as you can barely see, it just didn't turn very dark. Uh, and that was the, I think I used the copper settings. But then when I switched to 50%, um, it looked really good. I, I would just do this at 100% depth. Um, but uh, really, really cool. So definitely marks steel, no problem. I did uh, one of the attachment arms for um, the sharpening attachment. So some lucky person is going to get one that has my logo etched on it. So in it, this is really, really deep. Uh, and I think this is only one pass, and it feels really, really good. Um, this keychain from uh, Mr. House, uh, Mr. Brian House, that he gave me at Maker Camp. Figured I'd put my logo on that. And uh, I did try wood. Didn't mark it a little bit, <laughs> which I expected. This is one thing you do need a, a diode laser for. I didn't try leather. It does say it does have a leather setting, so I'm assuming you can do leather, but it didn't touch wood. And then finally, I wanted to do a knife <laughs> and hardened steel. So I did this one 100% uh, power, 100% depth, and um, went over it four times. It is nice and deep, um, as deep as my uh, electro etch. And I'm going to be um, stone washing this knife, so I wanted to make sure it was nice and deep. And you can see how nice and crisp that is. And that is on the 4K setting. So really, really happy with this laser. Um, I will be honestly throwing away my electro etching stamps and uh, going with this permanently. Um, huge success. If you want to get one of these, uh, there is a code down in the video description to uh, to get fifty dollars off. Uh, they're also right now they're thirteen ninety nine um, instead of fourteen ninety nine. So you're already saving a hundred dollars. And October twenty first to October thirty first, um, the Laser Packer folks are having a sale. So definitely check that out. So a couple of days after this video launches, they're having a huge sale uh, up to thirty percent off. So definitely go check it out. This is the, I can't, before uh, getting into any kind of fiber laser was in the $4,000 range. So they are really capturing the market here. Um, and I think you really want to go check it out. So use the codes down in the video description and uh, go get yourself a fiber laser. And uh, instead of doing electro etching, uh, I'll be doing this from now on. Thanks, folks. Hopefully, hopefully you found this useful, and we'll see you on the next one.